sure you use a scrap piece of paper. Okay? Get them all. Keep them down. Oh, there are six. Welcome to McLean High School, where our theme this year is commitment to excellence in spite of renovation. We're very proud of our offerings at McLean High School and have recently expanded those offerings to better meet the needs of all of our students. Our first priority at McLean is academic excellence. We are proud of our students' achievements in all facets of their school lives. The use of technology is an important part of the learning process at McLean High School. And we are very proud of the strides that we have made in technology over the past two years. McLean High School is truly a unique place to work. I find the staff, the students, the community to be very special. I've had the opportunity to work in a variety of schools both in Fairfax County and, and other school divisions. McLean is a very, very unique place to be. The cytoplasm, you got it. The cytoplasm is like the gel in the cell. Why do you think that we picked Reese's peanut butter cups? Because it's big, first of all, it's big. And we thought that the peanut butter was kind of like the inside of the nucleus and then the chocolate was like the nuclear membrane, right? Makes sense. Okay, so your Reese's peanut butter cup is going to equal your nucleus. This class is a teamed biology class. It has a learning disabilities teacher in the classroom as well as a general ed teacher. Um, it combines low class numbers with two teachers so that you can deliver just as difficult of information to students, but it's delivered in a little bit of a different way. This lab is the final lab that we do for this packet on the cell, and we do this so hopefully students can have a visual aspect. We've already um, done it written and we've done it orally and so now we do the cell cookie so hopefully they can remember everything that they've learned when they're studying for their exam and in the future. Why do you think that we picked gummy worms that you can fold up to make the ER? 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of surface area. Yeah. And if you wind it, right, you can make the roads that kind of travel from the nucleus to the cell membrane. Okay, the next one we're going to work on, okay, is the thing that takes food and releases energy, which would be the mitochondria. Okay, so you want to put your gummy bear on there for the mitochondria. Okay, now we're going to do the vacuole. Okay, now we picked Mentos to be the vacuole. So you have quite a few of these too for the plant cell, or else the plants wouldn't look green, right? But I have enough in there to make the whole thing look green. Okay, next we're going to do lysosomes. Does anyone remember what lysosomes do in the cell? They destroy damaged cells. You're right, they destroy damaged cell parts. Well, it cleans out the cell, so what did we say? Lysol, lysosomes. One way to help you guys remember. So for Golgi body, we're using something, this is the last one if you're selling gummy on the roof. We're using something that looks a lot like gummy worms. Okay, does anybody not have a check? I think this activity is really good for our students because not only do they enjoy um, all the candy that they're eating, but it's, um, it's, it's a good way, to, uh, it's a good and easier way for them to learn the parts of a cell. Eat, eat, eat. And if you don't want, if there's any extras, Mrs. Connerly and I will be more than welcome to eat them for you. This is our advanced placement physics class. These are second year physics students that are taking a college level calculus based physics course. And what they're doing right now is an experiment uh, that develops and proves, demonstrates the conservation of, uh, of energy, uh, mechanical energy and friction losses associated in the system. And so they're able to take very accurate uh, measurements using the equipment that they've got, these carts and tracks in conjunction with the computers. And they can get a very accurate reading on the final velocity uh, and on the distances traveled and therefore do a very accurate reading on what turns out to be the friction in an almost frictionless track. The whole subject of physics is just explaining to you how things interact in the world and why things happen, like why friction will stop a cart moving or slow it down and stuff like that. And so when we do a lab, we prove to ourselves that it does actually work, whereas reading in a book, I mean, it can tell us things, but on a lab we can find out for ourselves how it works and how it affects things. We're a, a three-year program here at McLean High School. It's photojournalism one, photojournalism two, photojournalism three. What we do is we teach design, layout, computer skills. We use PageMaker 6.5, Freehand 7 and graphics. Uh, we use Photoshop. And uh, we have expanded. We're very fortunate with the renovation now to have a really nice facility. If you could have just seen the closet we used to work in. And uh, we work in a team's concept here. We have two uh, yearbook classes meeting fifth and sixth period, 75 students who take this as an elective class. And uh, this has a marvelous tradition. Not only are the kids learning real world skills, which is so important, these kids go right out of here and use these computer application skills in everything they do, but they go on to college and they we have so many kids who are participating in publications in college now. Also, <clears throat> these kids uh, have really taken on the publication and they handle it themselves. I'm really proud of them. We also win a lot of awards. That's not what we go for, um, but, but it's been a byproduct of this because the kids are so talented and so enthusiastic. So for four years in a row, we've been a National Scholastic Press Association All-American publication, and that's really quite an accomplishment. And we've been uh, a trophy class publication for VHSL for the last several years, too. And we're very proud of our tradition here. I think the most rewarding thing that um, I get out of your book is the finished product. Um, to be able to open a book at the end of the year that I've worked on for nine months and to look at it and to know that I've had a part in it and to see a beautiful book and um, see a goal that was um, set and then reached is something that I just love doing. And it makes it extra special that it's not just me or five other people that share in it. It's the entire school that gets to look at my work and gets to uh, enjoy what I've done. The Agency Technology Services McLean High School partnership started two years ago. It was basically started to help 
the, the kids in the school both grow academically and personally. Uh, some of the things that we do for McLean High School, we provide demos and tours. We also provide professionals to come over to give seminars on how do you fill out resumes? Uh, what are you looking for in college? How did you get where you're at in your professional career? We also provide uh, technical assistance uh, to McLean High School. Uh, last year we installed over 40 internet machines for them in the library. And this year uh, we're scheduled to uh, install over 121 workstations throughout the school. Another thing we do is the Mentors and Tutors program. This is a program that we started this year. It involves professionals from CIA coming over to McLean High School to mentor students, to give them guidance, and also our tutor program to help those students uh, who are, at, uh, are in trouble academically. This is an ongoing uh, process, and we're very happy with how the partnership has uh, grown thus far. Personally, whenever you get an opportunity to help someone, uh, it's, all, it's always beneficial to you. You can never tell when you might be in that same situation or you, you might need help. So what goes around actually comes around. So that would be correct. The work-study program for students with mild retardation and other disabilities provides academic and vocational instructional opportunities in a regular high school setting. Students in this program participate fully in high school life while receiving the special services they need to prepare for their futures. This is the partners program. The um, peer helpers and peer mediators are in a class where they work with the work-study students on a one-to-one -one basis. The peer helping class is a class that they get credit in its fifth period. So they give up their lunch period because they work both lunches with these students who come during their lunch period. I enjoyed coming to, to um, the partners program because it, it's like you're interacting with other people and and you get you get to be a part you get to have a partner that you're paired up with from the general ed program so you get you get to um, interact with them you get to get to know them better good like it's very interesting it helps you learn more about different people it helps you get over your stereotypes it helps you realize that there's a lot in the world that you have to be open to and gets you get like really good friends from this like you get to know people you know and learn new situations and stuff about different people that you never knew or you never imagined it's like a waterfall of sand it's like water yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at her hands. They're all white now. Well, this class is Early Childhood Careers 1 and 2, and the purpose of this class is for the high school students to gain opportunities and hands-on experience with the preschoolers. Some of the things that the uh, high school students do are plan and prepare lessons for the preschoolers ages three through five, and they actually run a preschool with a high scopes method. The high school's teachers have an opportunity to, to look at and observe the children to see what kinds of learning needs that they may have. The reason why I'm in this class is because I want to like learn more about the children and how they interact with each other and how they communicate with each other and how they think. I, I'm in this class so it can prepare me for my future of when I have kids or for my career. I want to be a child psychologist. Um, I want to learn how kids think and how they act and how they feel. I want to give them advice. I'm really good with the kids. This is my second year in this class. I really enjoy being with them. They all have different personalities, different moods and stuff and I really enjoy being with them. I kind of understand how to get the patients, I'm just not sure. Like how to graph it maybe? Well how you graph it is basically the way it's done is if you look at this graph, because piecewise, yeah. this isn't continuous. So basically look at all your points, like a point here, point there. And you know the difference between an open point and a closed point, yeah. right? And see, this is Mega seven like uh, greater than or equal to. That's what's a closed point. Yeah, because it's in between. Yeah, and okay. this is an open point because it's uh, just less than.
This is the Lunch and Learning Program at McLean High School. Uh, we run it because there's a need to have students work during lunch on math. Sometimes they have after school activities and they can't quite work on, the, uh, on their mathematics during uh, after school. So we've decided to run this Lunch and Learning Program. It's been running for about six years now and each year it grows more and more. Um, this particular year we have some calculus students with us in the, in the A part of the Lunch and Learning Program. So they are very actively involved. My teacher makes an effort to come here on her own lunch time every single day and makes sure that we know all the problems that we have questions with. So I've definitely seen an improvement in my grade. No, that's fine. That's all you need for that. And then what's the minus whatever x is. This is a uh, lab with a uh, computer-based laboratory, CBLs, and the lab is called the Ball Bounce, and it's to um, see the motion of a ball as it bounces and graph that data. And the purpose of it is, has many applications. In Algebra 2, we can use it in terms of parabolas and finding maximum points on parabolas. Also, um, you can use it in some higher math for piecewise functions. The CBL system, it's great because you can attach different kinds of probes um, to the system and it can measure temperature, change, sound, anything. Um, and it's good because these factors that you can't really see, it puts it on a, a graph and you can visualize what, uh, what's happening. A nanny who speaks no English is coming to stay with you while your parents are away on vacation. She needs some information to better know what to expect during the next two weeks. She has already asked you questions about your family and your school. She also wants to McLean High School's foreign language department has been instrumental in developing PALS, performance assessment for language students. This program, which focuses on the students' foreign language skills, uses performance tasks to assess what the students know and can do in the language and to help them improve their speaking and writing skills. Today, the students are going to perform a speaking task, which will be recorded. Afterwards, they will assess each other's performance in order to further familiarize themselves with the scoring criteria or rubrics and to give each other valuable feedback. Using the feedback provided by their peers, each student will prepare a performance improvement plan which he or she will discuss with the teacher at a later date. The peer evaluation, I think that's very beneficial to the students because instead of the teacher who knows the whole language and knows all of it, grading you, it's your peers, people who are on the same level as you, know the same material as new and know everything that you know as well. They're grading you, so they probably won't be as harsh on you. PALS is a better program than just straight grading it because instead of what you did wrong or what you don't know, it's grading on what you know and what you're doing right and the things that you learned and have known about the language. <laughs> Say he likes like cold weather or something. Say he's what? Likes cold weather. This is Chinese too. I had them for Chinese one last year. We teach Mandarin, which is the official language of whole China. And you know more than 1.2 billion people speak Mandarin. That's why we teach Mandarin here. And you can, you can see Chinese is becoming a very important language worldwide. And we have a big Asian population in this community. So we can see the interest in Chinese is growing. And that's why we offer Chinese from last year. They learn the description about friends, family, daily activity in Chinese one. Since this is the beginning of the year, so they, I asked them to do this project to describe their best friend. And then the last part of the project is a new material which they need to describe like and dislike. So they need to say, 我喜欢, 我不喜欢, which means I like and I don't like. It's a 
which is a, let's say, review project. And they can create the person and they can write three paragraphs in Chinese. So it's practicing the grammar and the writing. I'm taking this class because I'm Chinese, but um, more so because uh, China is a big country and I figure it'll be useful one day to travel there and because if I want to do business with China, then I can, I can communicate with the people. Like China is like the biggest country basically in this world, so communicating with them would be an advantage for me as a student and as a person in the world. Last fall, Dr. Caldwell approached me about a program that she had um, designed involved taking students on a trip to study at Oxford, England for two weeks. We began an intense application pr procedure at that point in time. We selected 20 from McLean, uh, Thomas Jefferson, and also Langley High School. Starting in January of last year, we met with those students, myself and a teacher from Langley High School, Brigitte Levy. We began meeting with the students. We met once every three weeks, roughly, to go over the curriculum that the students were assigned by the two Virginia Tech professors. The curriculum was worked out between the four of us. It included reading ten different books, a combination of both literature and history. The time period that we were focusing on was 15th century to 1800 England. We left um, in July, so as we got closer to our departure date, we began to meet more often, and we also began, this would include then meeting in the summer, and we began to prepare the students for the trip in terms of uh, the travel as well as the curriculum that they'd already been working on. We traveled to England. The professors were with us. The students then began a two-week intensive study where they interacted with the professors both in a formal classroom setting and then they went and visited the places they had read about. When the students returned, they had to write two papers, one for history, one for English. Um, they averaged about 10 pages apiece. Uh, the professors then assigned them credit, three hours of history credit, three hours of English credit at the college level, which they can access through their transcripts, and they can use that in their application procedure that they do for colleges as they begin looking at colleges this year. I've never um, traveled off of the East Coast. The farthest I've ever been is Michigan to Florida, and so just like I said in my application, the plane ride would be a complete um, new experience. And um, to live in a culture that I've never even, I've studied before but never seen or experienced was just incredible for me. <laughs> Having two professors who are, who are teaching you at the college level um, gives you a really eye-opener experience to the college level and the college type of courses that you're going to be taking. So. In both of those lights, it was a really good experience for me, and it meant a lot to me. What we're going to make is called a tart to tom, another dessert. Okay, the thing about this is it's really easy to make because we're only going to make it in one pan. We're going to use about a half a stick, third to a half a stick of butter. Okay, we're going to use a ready-made pie crust. This is very easy to do or you can use puff pastry. We'll get into that later on down the road. I have my oven already preheated to 400 degrees. What we do in gourmet foods is we cook um, American regional. This week uh, what we're doing is I'm cooking mid-Atlantic. Uh, in previous class periods we talked about the mid-Atlantic states, uh, what they were, who settled there, why do they eat the things they do there, uh, and what foods are found there. Um, and today, being that this is the apple season and a lot of apples are raised in the mid-Atlantic, um, we're doing some apple desserts. Just like this. Remember, speed is not of the essence. Okay. Do another one. And then I'm going to add my sugar, and I'm going to start mixing it together. All right? Okay. So you can see the sugar starting to melt a little bit. Okay. Just like this. I'm taking this class because it's something that I'm interested in. Personally, I'm interested in like physical things to do as a career, like cooking or construction or something like that. So I figured I'd try this class out to see how I liked it. Okay, you can see it's starting to turn brown, okay, just like caramel does. Okay. 
Now, as soon as this melts, essentially, um, this portion is done. And again, you see it's kind of ooey gooey. The thing you have to remember, folks, is this sugar is very, very hot. I'm gonna slide my pan over here, okay? And I'm gonna take my apples that I already have cut into quarter inch slices, and, and I'm just gonna carefully, carefully layer them in the bottom of the pan. Now again, be very, very careful. This is the tricky part because you don't, you don't want to burn your fingers. Police, don't move. Put your weapon down. Put your hands in the air where I can see them. Up against the wall. Arms straight out. Legs against the wall. Ankles in. Palms out. This is law enforcement careers class. It's developed uh, to instruct students for career in law enforcement after they graduate from high school and eventually college. It is a uh, two credit class that if the students obtain a B in the class, uh, they get three credits at NOVA for each end of the class that they take, law enforcement one and law enforcement two. We learn the basics of, of law enforcement techniques to include uh, patrol functions, uh, supplementary functions and investigative functions. Um, they, they work in practical situations, they have theory and then apply the practical situations later on in the classroom work. They go on field trips, professional field trips to different agencies such as Fairfax County, the CIA, the FBI, military police, and other local agencies. Okay, class, Tan Tuck. Um, I'm taking this class because I thought it would make me a better person, more responsible. I'm looking into the possibility of taking uh, law enforcement as a career when I graduate from high school. This is dance one, two, three, and four. It's the second year of the class. Uh, the goals of the class are to prepare a performance every quarter and then to execute that performance. Um, this is a new program, just started for two years, and why they implement it is because they believe that dance should be always taught um, in the secondary school, that since we give the children opportunities in arts and in music, that they should have the same opportunities in dance, and that all children should be um, be allowed to experience dance. I took this class last year. I was in dance uh, two and three. And currently I'm in dance four, and I'm also the TA for this class. Basically, I signed up for this class because I have a natural love for uh, dance. Uh, although I'm not going to major in dance, I'm going to have a minor in dance. Uh, this class helps me, you know, in dance to be creative and in other classes where I can express my creativity as well. This class supports all of that. Remember to keep your hands up. You don't have to hold.